Thank you guys for joining me here on the last segment of today's show show before we officially start week seven tomorrow and get to all those previews. I had to bring up this uh this topic that I saw on the Jacksonville Jaguars and so far the Jaguars sort of stopped that sort of free fall that they were in um before this not before this week, before the week before this week where they beat the Indianapolis Colts and um uh, you know that was a a good moment to have, right? To get their first win, but it didn't really last too long because after that they went over to London and they lost recently just this past week to the Chicago Bears, 35-16 to over there in London. And while Chicago does deserve some credit for, you know, playing better on offense and getting what it seems like a little bit more of Caleb Williams now and having a better understanding of what to do with him in this offense, um... It could also have a lot to do with the, just the, the Jaguars in general, right? Because they're just not necessarily very good right now. Um, and after that loss, their safety, Andre Sisco, had some pretty harsh reality sort of words to, uh, to say about this team and what, uh, what he saw on the field in London, which isn't something great to hear if you are a, um, if you are a Jacksonville Jaguars fan, actually. Give me one, give me one second, guys. I do have it here. I just forgot to, just forgot to add it. So just give me one second. We'll have it here for you guys. Um, here we go. We have it here. This is what Andre Cisco had to say. I just forgot to add it. He said, "How should I say this?" Um, a lot of quit. As the last line of defense in a situation like that, you could feel when we're playing as one and when we're not. I feel that very early in the game, maybe after halftime, it felt like we weren't playing like one. And he also went on to say that it was extremely concerning to see the team play like it did on Sunday and that it's kind of dangerous knowing that some guys aren't giving 100% because it makes everybody else um, pretty vulnerable um, in terms of health, in terms of safety. Safety If um, everyone's not doing their job to the best of their abilities it could jeopardize somebody else and then we're talking about safety reasons right and that's obviously no good for anybody right on on that case and um what really stood out was obviously that he said that he saw a lot of quit in this team and that's why the this question pops up right because i feel like we're on the brink right now of whether or not like the question says is it now or never for this jaguars team in 2024 because we've um, gone through the first six weeks and it's gone as bad as it possibly could have. The only way it could be worse is if they haven't won a game yet and they were 0-6. But um, still, it, it doesn't make it any better that they're 1-5 and, and that they barely won that game against the Indianapolis Colts, right? To sit here where they are and have Andre Sisco say that some guys um, just look like they quit already and have given up on the game. And I think that speaks volumes about... Um, what this season could be for the Jacksonville Jaguars, right? It, it feels like I said we're on the brink of either this team is going to get it together and start to piece things bit by bit and just you know be kind of like a 500 team, or that they're going to get their butts kicked again. And next week, you know, next week when uh, the games are all done, right during the week, um, we could maybe start seeing some drastic changes, right? If we see some of the same attitude and performances and just just very disappointing display from the Jaguars after a year where, you know, they collapsed pretty drastically. And um, the the thought is that you're, you're going to do everything possible to avoid that and just be the furthest you can be from relate, having any sort of relation to that team in 2023, right? But it's been more of the same this year, right? The performances haven't been there. Their, uh, their defense isn't playing very good. And... Um, not only did Andre Sisco say that there, uh, that he saw a lot of quit in this team, what Doug Peterson also said kind of stood out to me as well when he said that, um, he said, we've got to change. I say we, it's all of us, coaches, players, everybody. We've got to change right now that culture. Otherwise, it just gets out of control. We're on a slippery slope or right on the cusp of that slope. At some point, we've got to say enough is enough. And you've got to have enough pride and figure out a way. And um, two things stood out to me there where he said, um, 
we've got to change right now that culture. And when you talk about a word like that, that's sort of like the, the foundation of everything, right? And I think talking about changing the culture, a move to that sort of level of being that drastic to change an entire culture, that could mean maybe changing the head coach. And that's why I kind of rated Doug Peterson as being the the potential next coach to be fired because this team is 1-5. And, and for himself, I'm sure he didn't mean fire himself, but I'm sure he meant that um, talking about changing the culture, that's pretty drastic to do for a 1-5 in five team and kind of get him to believe wholeheartedly in a whole other different idea. And um, for him to mention that right now, it must be getting pretty bad to where um, it's not like we're going to change one thing here with the offense or another thing here with the defense, right? We're talking about the entire culture, not just the team, but the organization and everything like that. Talking about changing all of that in this bubble that we that we call culture um I think that that speaks about the the bigger problems that this team has the uh, the macro problems that just can't be fixed throughout the course of a season if that's the case then uh some major changes could be heading towards this Jaguars team and also um where he mentioned that uh what did he say he he also mentioned that um you know they're right on the the brink on that slippery slope like he said and that at some point you have to say enough is enough or you have to just have enough pride and figure out a way. You know, it, it feels like we're right at that moment. Why I feel like we're, we're right at that moment is because they're going to play in London again and uh, they're going to be playing the Patriots, right? They're going to be playing a rookie quarterback with a Patriots team that, again, isn't favored to win in any of their games this year and they just got off of a game where they got their butts kicked at home by the Houston Texans. So... Why this is now or never, why I feel like there's a now or never moment, why Doug Peterson is also kind of hinting at that is because now I feel like playing the Patriots, you not to throw shade on the Patriots, but you can't have a better game to try and win that you're expected to win to try and turn this thing around, right? If you can't even beat the Patriots with a rookie quarterback that Drake May looked pretty good, um, and I don't feel like it's going to be a cakewalk by any means for this Jaguars team, but still... For them to win this game, they have to win this game because if not, like I said the following week, we could be seeing some very drastic changes if they fall to a rookie quarterback. Again, a Patriots team that is also 1-5 in five, and they couldn't beat the Tyler Huntley-led Miami Dolphins or um, that they beat the Bengals, but ever since then, they've just gotten their butts kicked in, in most of these games. If you can't even beat that team with a rookie quarterback, then then some big decisions need to be made. And that's why, again, I feel like Doug Peterson is going to be one of those guys to uh, to feel the pain, the wrath of some of these changes. And, um, you know, things have gone as bad as they could have for the Jaguars also because you're not going to move your quarterback, right? You just made him one of the highest paid in the NFL. And um, you're just trying to bounce back from 2023, and it hasn't gone that way also. And uh, to kind of give context to this situation a little bit here while we wrap up, they, uh, like I said, they couldn't beat the, uh, well, at that time, the, Tua was their quarterback. So um, they lost to Tua and the Miami Dolphins. That was one of their losses. The the Patriots, who they have coming up this week, lost to the Tua-less Dolphins. So they have to win that game. Um, this Jaguars team has also given the Browns their only win this year. And... We always talk about the Browns and how they can't score 20 points. The Jaguars only scored 13 points in that game. So, you know, for how bad we talk about the Browns, the Browns beat the Jaguars. That was their only win. So that's not a good look also. Um, they got their butts kicked against the Bills. They just got their butts kicked again against the, the, the Bears with another rookie quarterback. I know he was the number one overall pick, but um, still, they have shown some of their weaknesses. So to get beat up like like you did this past Sunday is uh, pretty resounding. Like I said, also, they just barely lost or they just barely beat the Indianapolis Colts. And this defense, again, um, I haven't been a big fan of at all this year. I feel like they have some glaring holes. And you can see it in the stats as well here where uh, their defense is, is allowing the second most yards total and per game in the NFL. They've allowed 2,340 total yards this year. 
is only second to the New Orleans Saints with 2,375. They've allowed 390 yards per game, which again is only second to the New Orleans Saints, who are at 395 per game. Their passing defense is the worst in the NFL, allowing the second most points per game also, 29 points per game, only second to the Carolina Panthers at 33. And I guess based on those stats, it's no surprise why the Panthers and the Jaguars team also have the, the same record, right? And they shouldn't because of having Trevor, because of having a Super Bowl winning quarterback like Doug Peterson and um, bringing in a bunch of other talented guys, right? It shouldn't be what it has been so far with the Jaguars. So with all of that being the case, this week is the now or never moment, right? If you win, you're, you're extending your life, right? You gain another additional life, but you are very much on your last life, right? If we're talking about um, that sort of sense, right? You're on your last life if you're a cat, right? You've already used up your nine lives. You're on your last one right now. You can gain one back, gain some extra time if you win, but if you don't, that's it. Uh, at least in my estimation, right? I feel like if you lose to this Patriots team, something needs to happen, and already the season's not looking great. I, they're not going to make the playoffs, right? But there has to be some sort of ramification for, for losing to the Patriots and being 1-6 because um, carrying on from last year, it's it's very unacceptable what we're seeing from the Jaguars. So um, their division isn't also, you know, otherworldly, right? It's not like the NFC North or anything like that. You know, the, the Colts are 3-3. Three and three, The Titans are 2-4, and four, I believe, or something like that. It's not like they're dealing with an uphill battle that much. So for them to be last pretty drastically last is uh is unacceptable so now is the moment for this Jaguars team that they need to take advantage of or some consequences should be coming down from uh from their owner so that is pretty much it on the Jaguars and today's show I want to thank you guys for joining me on today's episode of the chip shot football podcast please remember to like follow and subscribe to the show as well as checking out the network on all forms of social media and following them as well and tuning in to both YouTube channels to catch more of the Chip Shot Football Podcast in a variety of different ways as well. And lastly, remember to tune in every weekday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time for more of these live shows to get involved with, covering the NFL, all the storylines, debating, discussing everything around this league with me, Manny Maradiege, as your host. Thank you again for joining me, and I'll see you guys back here tomorrow to get underway with week seven in the NFL. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit and the coffee ain't hit yet. Yeah, damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go to.